when I when I did that, I was like, I didn't feel comfortable with. It. I'm like, yo, I'm a, I'm just a human. Like, I'm same as you guys. Like, why are we having this barricade between us? You know, what I can't say to you guys, what you can't mm-hmm. say to me. You know, and what kind of content I need to put out. I didn't like that at all. Hello, everybody. I'm Aisha, and today I'm with a friend, a special friend, all the way from Taiwan. From the US. So, Where are you from? Introduce yourself. Say hello. So, hi, all, uh... what's up, Malaysia? <laughs> Shock fans. Um, Kair, and I'm from Taiwan. Okay, but I was raised in the States. So, what am I? I don't know. <laughs> this is Gemini. Um, this is my first time in Malaysia, and I had my first fan meeting yesterday, mm-hmm. which was lovely. A lot of people showed up, and I really hope to come back again and hold my own hold my own show. Yeah. How was it? How was meeting your Malaysian fans? It's actually quite wild because uh, usually my content or my way of performing, you know, can be explicit. Mm-hmm. So I was very careful with what I'm saying on stage, what I can do. But the fans, they showed me I don't have to do that. <laughs> they were very okay. straightforward. Okay. They were like, "Hey, Karen, can I touch your abs?" <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> So I had a you know a photo fo- uh, a photo shoot uh, not a photo shoot a like fan meeting. Uh huh. I get to take photos with each fans. Oh and, oh that's fun. Yeah. So after like you know hosting the the, the fan meeting for an hour, I had an hour of you know fan meeting shoot. So mm-hmm. yeah, and each one of them had their own request. So it was pretty fun. So you were with each and everyone, and I took I took a photo wow. with every one of them. With Joe Bro, Joe Bro was there with me. Okay, and we hosted the family together, and we're just taking photos. Yeah, cute, lovely. Okay, so we want to get to know you a little better before we s- kind of start start the interview. Mm. So, what's a fun fact about you that your fans might not know? Okay, so this fun fact, I wouldn't say it's fun. It's quite disgusting for me. Okay, so uh, I never ever show my feet to anybody. Why? Weird. Um. I don't know. I have. I'm. I don't like to show my feet. Like mm-hmm. it's a phobia of mine. So I get really insecure if you're in a room with me and I don't have my socks on. Interesting. It's weird. I have nice toes. I have nice feet. Like there's no no <laughs> doubt about it. You know. I have pedicures. Okay. But I never show my feet to anybody. I would never wear flip flops outside my house. Okay. Never. That is pretty interesting. Yeah. You will never see my feet. Never. Okay. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> what am I can, talking to? But can you look at other people's feet? Okay, there's another fact. Uh, okay, I love why look at people's feet. <laughs> <laughs> Three emojis to describe your vibe. Three emojis. So this is one that I use the most is the crying face, the little uh, crying smiling face. Ah, okay. Yeah, two tears and just one tilted one, right? Okay. I, I tilted one. And the second one is uh, pink hearts. So there's two pink hearts, one big one and one small one. Okay. Yeah, I really like that one. And another one would probably be, ooh, ooh, that's, ooh, that's a hard one. What's the, what's the, ah, glasses, sunglasses. The glasses. Oh, sunglasses, because I wear sunglasses a lot. You can see that. Yeah, man. <laughs> don't show my ass for free. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I'm Is that another thing that you don't show, or? Yes, I actually don't like to show my eyes. Oh. Because uh, I don't sleep that much, so I look very tired all the uh. time. So I don't want to see people, you know, I don't want people to look at me where I like. I'm really like zoned out. Okay. Dead inside. Understand. Understand. Yeah. Okay. And plus, while I'm doing this interview, I have my eyes closed this whole time. You don't know. It's crazy. It's like this. <laughs> Actually, I didn't close my eyes. I didn't open my eyes this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay, let's talk about LSD. So this is actually my second album is titled Eros. Mm-hmm. Eros, the Greek god of love. Okay. Ah. And so this whole album is basically talking about love and sex and healthy sex. Okay. Educational kind of sex. Okay. That's all I talk about. The song is very vibey. Like when you get into the song, there's a flow of it. And it's, it's, it's an emotion of taking you in taking you into that zone of world. So that's actually going to be the intro of my album. So throughout the album, it's going to be an emotion of relationship with the other person, with your partner, basically. So Arrows is going to be my second album, which is going to be released in December. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Interesting. So what was the creative process? 
So mm, of your album, I like to imagine things. You know, okay. I'm not a doer. I'm an imaginer. <laughs> I'm not so sure that's nothing a word. from this album is from your personal experience. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I don't know if I want to believe that. <laughs> so definitely from my personal experiences, um, okay. uh, I write all my songs and I like to arrange all my songs. So every instrument you hear, every beat, every kick, every sound is actually from me, how I like it. And it's from moments of life, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you hear from my first song to my latest song, you can hear a change through, you know, my personal experiences. So, yeah, my songs come from my personal experience. If you can explain your sound to someone who has never heard any of your songs, right? Mm. How do you explain it to them? I think special. Okay. You know, um, I try not to follow the trend. I try to just release what I want to release. But... I you know, uh, I think collaborating is also the fun part. You get to mix your magic with others. But yeah, I think be special is quite different from what we're hearing now, mm -hmm. which might be a problem for me because it might not be as mainstream. So that's why I do a lot of different content to try to get people to know it's a song, right? So at first I have to have your eyes, then I have your ears, and I have your heart. So yeah, that's my way of promoting myself. So. Okay. So you're pretty busy. You were from Singapore and then you flew into KL. Yeah. Had a family. Yeah. And then you're leaving. I'm leaving tomorrow. Back to Taiwan. Back and to Taiwan. Preparing to go to America for the rest of the tour. Yeah. yeah. So how are you resting? I'm not. Oh. That's why I'm wearing sunglasses. Do you... <laughs> It's not sleeping. Do you have any hobbies? How do you unwind? So I nothing only, related to music. Nothing related to music. Yeah. Okay. So I have two cats. Oh, cute. Yeah. I they're my family, and um, I actually am mostly at home. So if I'm not oh. making music, I'm watching anime at home with my cats, yeah, or working out, going to the gym. I thought you were an E. I am an E, but I'm only an E when I'm working. Oh. So I put all my energy, you know, when I'm working. Mm -hmm. When I'm by myself, I actually don't really go out with friends that much. Because friends would call me at me, want to go eat, man. Ah, I'm tired, bro. Like, I exert all my energy already at work. I don't want to talk anymore. Mm -hmm. So cats, is easy. They don't talk to you. Okay. Yeah, they don't even, they don't even notice you, okay? They're just sleeping there. You're, you're there. You're there. You're there a slave, basically. But, yeah, they don't talk, and I don't have to walk them. We're just chilling, so... So it's just your cats and then work and then your fans. Yeah, and anime. What love <laughs> and watching. anime. So when you you're meeting your fans, yeah. What's a memorable experience meeting your fan? And how does you know your fans sometimes do they like influence you and your music? Definitely. Have they? Yeah. Um I think I see myself not as a artist or mm -hmm. musician. I see myself as an entertainer. Okay. So I want to be as positive as I can cuz as I think for my job is to make other people feel better, uh, you know, starting from the from starting from the first when they wake up, they see my my Instagram, they could take a get a laugh of it, they could get some good inspirations. All I want to give is good vibes to people. Mm -hmm. So I think of my fans of when I'm down or when I'm really tired. I'm like, what am I doing this for? Um, for me, definitely. But what else? Can I? Am I making other people's life better? It's my content, you know, making them laugh. It's my music, making them feel good about themselves. So I want to be as positive as I can to them. Mm -hmm. But also make it re relatable because I think that's so important nowadays because we're, I think we're past that age where, like, you know, there's a superstar and, like, you dream about a superstar. Now for me, it's like, how can I be a friend? How can I be that friend that, that, was, that can always be there, you know? But, yeah, meeting fans... There are some memorable moments. Um, some I don't think I should say, but I think m most memorable ones would be like when we're doing a photo together. Let's talk about LSD. Okay. More. Okay, so um, if you could throw a listening party for LSD, yeah, anywhere in the world, yeah, how would you do it? I think smell. When it comes to smell, like if I were to ever hold an album listening party, mm -hmm. uh, one of my LSD producers told me about this, and I think I thought it was a good idea. Like when you enter a room, uh -huh. you could already smell me, the oh. cologne that I use. Okay, and you're in there, smells good. So when it smells good, the music is good. You're in that vibe already, right? And the lighting, you know, 
is also very important. So I think if I were to hold a listening party, smell would be very important. Okay, so if you could do a remix with any artist for LSD, who would it be? Why? Gosh, that's a good one. I actually did another another song I want to talk about. It would be Don't okay. Stop. Okay. One of my favorite songs. Mm-hmm. If I could do Don't Stop with another artist, uh-huh. for Jay Park. Oh. Mm, zesty. Man, I, he would kill that song. Okay. My God, he would make that song so wild, man. It's crazy. J Park. J Park. But if we were going like uh, maybe more tr- more cleaner version uh, that could be <laughs> most broadcast on radio, probably Tay Yang for Big Bang. I love it's Tae coming Yang. midway. Man, I missed him <laughs> twice. He's going to Taiwan. And he had one in Hong Kong. I had my concert day. He had a concert in Hong Kong. I was like, I was performing. I was like, I wanted to I be wanna, at his. I want to see Tay Yang. <laughs> <laughs> Why y'all here seeing me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so what role do you think your fans play in shaping your music and artistic direction throughout your career? How okay. have they in- inspired you? Yeah, mm. that's a very good question. Thank you. Such a good interviewer. Thank. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Keep that in the video, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take that out, please, producer. <laughs> so, I think at first, when I was assigned to a company, um, every company wants the artist to be rare to find or like someone that's you know very private about their life you know they want that superstar kind of thing they wanted that image of oh you can't touch me Mm -hmm. i think a lot of stars still do that now but when i when i did that i was like i didn't feel comfortable with i'm like i'm a i'm just a human like i'm same as you guys like why are we having this barricade between us you know what i can't say to you guys what you can't Mm -hmm. say to me you know and what kind of content you need to put out i didn't like that at all Mm -hmm. but after a while um i started to really i opened my own company my own label and then i was like man i'm a if i'm my own boss that means i could do anything i want and what would i want to do first and first is what do the fans want Mm -hmm. so it would for someone to get to know you, that might take a couple of years. If I want them, if I'm th- giving them the presentation of me, right? They have to be interested first for them to get to know you. But for me to get to know somebody, it would take me two hours because I want to get to know you. So I started from that perspective of what do the fans need? What do the fans want? And what do the fans haven't seen before? So starting from that factor, I'm like, okay, so what is an artist that, that, that can sing, that can make music? And that's, you know, uh, in, in a fashion that can be funny as well, but also can be sexy at the same time. So I was I was looking through the list of entertainers in Taiwan. And I was like, hmm, I don't think there's an image like that in Taiwan mm-hmm. yet. So I started to dig in more of what I can do as an artist, like how far I can take this. So it affected my music, the, the way I put out my content. And yeah, I think... My number one priority is what the fans want and what the fans need, and what can I do? And what else? Okay, so how do you think your you know sound evolved from the the time you started making music until okay. now? Okay, when it comes to music, I I never learned music when I was little, so I learned music through YouTube and Ooh-ah. yeah, I I learned arrangement and all that stuff from YouTube. I'm not good like that. I need a teacher. You need a yeah. teacher. Oh, I don't have the money to hire. <laughs> Cause YouTube is free, and <laughs> okay. there's so many teachers you learn from, so many uh-huh. genres and stuff. But I think, you know, I'm the type of artist. You know, some artists when they have the first album, that's the best album ever. Okay. Because it's from their past, maybe fifteen years, mm-hmm. twenty years of their life, and they they release that first album, right? So for me, it's quite different because I learn music very late. So my sound is actually progressing more and more, and. As my sound progresses more and more and more producers and more artists that want to work with me because it's maturing, right? So I would say it became more unique and also delicate mm-hmm. and sounds fancier, I guess, because it might be more rough in the, in, in, in the beginning. But now I'm thinking, okay, what kind of equipment do I need to invest in? A better mic, a better compressor, a better... Uh, a, 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 more expensive mixing engineer i don't know like who else can i work with who who else in the industry would want to work with me you know so yeah definitely evolve and the artists that i work with too okay yeah. so what do you have for lunch <laughs> what do i have for lunch yeah i actually didn't eat anything for lunch oh no because are you hungry now no no i like to fast oh. 
I usually fast uh, when I wake up all the way after I work out. So after I work out, I would eat. So there's this thing called intermittent fasting. Like, okay. You know, like 16 hours, 16 hour, mm-hmm. you know, eat an eight hour eating. It's window. up to you, right? Actually, I actually eat what I want to eat. So I don't have like, you know, three, three, three meal a day kind of, you know, like uh-huh. a lot of people. Because I think my dad, um, my dad is a old Chinese doctor. Like he's into chiropractor. He's a chiropractor. Okay. So he told me a story. He's like, when do you ever see lions eat three meals a day? Like lions only eat when they're hungry, right? So I took that philosophy with it with me. <laughs> of I only eat when I'm hungry. Okay. I only eat when I'm really hungry because I want to feel my body telling me, okay, you're hungry now. Are you hungry? Because sometimes when you're doing three days a meal, you might have excess calories from the day before. Yeah. Because if each person, let's say, take 2,000 calories or 200, 500 calories a day, that's a normal intake for every person. But if the previous day you had like 4,000 calories, that means you, you took 1,500 calories more, right? So you need to deduct that from your present day and don't eat anything. And your body will actually tell you that you're not hungry. But because your mind is saying, oh, it's time to eat. It's lunchtime. So your your bo- your mind is telling your body it's time to eat now. But your body is telling you, no, I'm not hungry. You ate too much yesterday. So now I'm more of I feel within my body if I'm hungry or not, if I'm thirsty or not. So everything comes from within. Okay, interesting. What else do we need? Do we need to know about you? My gosh, what do you want to know about me? I'm very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us one more fact. One more fact? Yeah. Ooh, let me think. <laughs> Make uh, it fun. Mm, oh, uh, I don't drink alcohol. Okay. I don't smoke. Uh, I know like, I, look, I look like a party guy or like, I look like I have a lot of chicks. You do. What? <laughs> <laughs> I look like I'm out there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. all night. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I actually I like to read a lot. Wow, I have, an intellectual. <laughs> you already know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I like to read a lot of self help books. Yeah, cause, interesting. Yeah, because when I was little, I didn't grow up with a very f- healthy family. I didn't have my parents beside me. Okay, so I never really had a man or a woman taught me how to be a good man. Mm-hmm. I think having a having somebody you could look up to when you're growing up is can be very important. The way you think, the way you do things, the way you work, right? But if I don't, I had to get that from the books. Okay. And I I love to read self help books and also manifesting of what you really want. I mm-hmm. feel like this world like it's unlimited. Everything is possible. Only everything comes from you. Like only you can decide what you can do or you cannot do so if you really want to do it you can do it and yeah you just have to make that decision so i i'm an avid you know self-help book reader yeah reader basically i like that yeah very inspiring what advice would you give to aspiring artists aspiring artists yeah Woo. uh never think of your flaws as mm. flaws because your flaws might be that unique niche that you need Okay. So sometimes, well, I think most of the time, your company, your friends will tell you, oh, don't do that. Oh, they think you're weird. But that weirdness might be something that is what the world is missing. Because everybody is trying to eliminate their weirdness to fit into the society, to work. And when you're little, you know, your dad might tell you, don't dance on the table. Mm-hmm. Okay, but now we want to see singers dance on the table. Correct. Because it's very entertaining, right? Yeah. So... Why, why, like, you know, little kids or, you know, at a young age, you know, we dare to dream more. We dare to try more things because it's fun. It's creative. But as we grew up, you know, schools, the government, society tell you to take all that off to become a normal citizen. But what you need to do is not to be normal. Okay. You need to be yourself. Mm-hmm. You need to be that weirdness that you have. Not telling you to, like, you know, break laws, to do, like, you know, things that bad but be weird but follow (laughs) be weird but don't harm others okay and really dig in deep but like what do you want Mm -hmm. and what is something that is missing in this world that you can give you can offer and that can make other people's life better yeah and that don't focus so much on the numbers because you'll only want more 
there's is never ending. It's never gonna end. So know that what do you want? Let's make a list of goals out. Okay, five years from now, and then push that push back from there. Okay, three years. What do you want? One year in this one year. What do you want? And ultimately, you reach that five year goal, right? You have another five year goal. Mm-hmm. So have goals, but also you know dream big and do things that never people have never done before, and be open minded. Okay. Yeah. Your album coming out in December. Yeah, I'm hoping it's in December. Okay. Yeah. He hope it comes I out in hope. December. Yeah. So one thing that you are excited for your fans to hear one song. Give us a little. One song. Uh. <laughs> so there's this one song. Um. I'm still deciding the name, but it's called Flaunt. Okay. So flaunt is the word that's saying like, yo, I'm gonna show off. I want to be who I am. You know. Um. That's the that's the whole theme of the song, because. In Asia, I would say we're more com- conservative compared to like people in the West. Mm-hmm. You know, they embrace themselves, right? Yeah. And I'm all about embracing yourself, embracing your flaws, your positives. I don't know, whatever you want, embrace it. And don't be shy to show it off. Mm-hmm. Like, if you bought something you really like, let's say you bought an LV bag. Okay, if you want to, some people are humble about it. Oh, no, it wasn't that expensive. I mean, they have a nice watch. No, it's, nah, it's all right. No, nah, man, it's a nice watch, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Show it off. It's fine. You worked hard. You bought it. And, yeah, it's okay to flaunt sometimes. You know? Okay. Yeah. Last, last question. Not okay. really a question, but what message do you want to send to your Malaysian fans mm. who is waiting for your live performance? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I will definitely come back. There's mm-hmm. there's a reason why I'm here doing this interview. It's to talk to you, telling you that I'm gonna come back from my show. And when that come when that show day comes, I wanna see you there. And it's gonna be very, very fun. Trust me. Trust me. I do my best on all my shows. All right. Yeah. When is it? Well, next year when I get my visa. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much. It was fun talking to you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Shok. Thank you. See you guys next time. I'm Kyra. Bye-bye.